What's up, guys and girls? How are we? Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. Hope you're having a good week. My first time doing this. My guy Gary V does it. I thought it would be interesting to answer your questions live, bringing you on here, hearing your thoughts. So bear with me here. It's my first time doing it. Let's see if we can get some people on here and I can answer some of your questions. Any tips for a number six holding midfielder, Connor? Yes, most importantly is, is keep possession for your team. Don't lose the ball. Connect uh, the back line and the front line. Get the ball in good spaces. And then at, defensively, most importantly, is you got to break up play. You got to organize your team. And you got to always stay in the middle. Stay in the middle in front of your back four. You're basically guarding the back four. So just think of it like that. And then from an attacking standpoint, don't try to be a playmaker. I, I wouldn't try to be a playmaker. Maybe like the first 20, 25 minutes, you know, connect your passes, connect as many passes as possible, get into the rhythm of the game, and then you can maybe start to play longer, riskier balls. But what I've really learned is you want to, most importantly, is you want to try to connect the team, connect passes, don't play risky balls, always switch the sides of attack, be constantly switching. Obviously, look to play forward through the lines on the ground to your number eight, to your number 10, and let them do the playmaking. Uh, always stay in the middle of the pitch. Don't go to the side of the pitch. Johansson, why can't you sleep every night? It's, that's, the mo that's one of the most important things for performance. You know, everyone wants to buy these supplements from GNC, from Vitamin Shop, all this crap. The most important thing for recovery, enhancing your performance, is proper sleep. I've covered it many times in my content. I wrote an article on how to get proper sleep. Invest time in your sleep. It's worth it. It's very, very worth it. Zay now, yes, yes, perform it, perform it right after training. Yes, I, I would do it right after training. Static stretching right after training is huge for a number of reasons. I think the one of the most important things uh, why static tr uh, stretching is important after training is because you um, get into a parasympathetic state. So you're going to switch yourself from a sympathetic nervous system state to a parasympathetic nervous system state, which is key for adaptation. Sympathetic nervous system state is when you're, you're, you're going, you're running, your heart rate's high. Parasympathetic is when you recover and you rest. And, and as I've spoken about many times in my content, you um, adapt and you get better during rest, not during performance. Yeah, so Zane, I'll do, do the stretches right after training. I like to do about 15 to 20 minutes of stretching before I get home, especially in the groin and the hips region, because that's been a problem for me. So I think you should really spend time static stretching your problem areas. Static stretching gets such a bad rap, but it's I, I've consulted with so many different people, lot, lots of physical therapists, high-level strength coaches, because you know I like to learn from people who are smarter than me. And Nine out of 10 people say static stretching is the right move, especially after training. You don't want to be doing static stretching before training because, um, I mean, you can do static stretching before in your problem areas, but like I said, you don't want to be getting into a parasympathetic state before training. Uh, if you need to stretch your problem areas, just make sure you get a very good warm up and a good activation. Should resistance bands be used for, right, let me, let me show this. Should resistance bands be used for pre-warm-up activation or for a cool down after a session? I've answered this many times before. Resistance bands are used for activation. You use them to activate your muscles to get ready for a session. So most commonly they're used for your glutes and your hips to get your hips activated and ready for the session. You do that with neural band walks, band walks. Use them for your upper body to activate your your uh, your scapula, your upper back. So they're used as an activation. They are used in. I would say you you can you should first do more of a cardiovascular warm up, so like a jog, high knees, butt kicks, things like that. Then you do your dynamic stretches. Then you do your your activation exercise, your glute activation exercises. You focus on the muscles and the, the body parts that you're using for the session. So, for example, if you're doing multi-directional speed, which is common for a football session, do lat you would do lateral band walks. If you're working on your linear, linear speed, doing 
to do for and what. Um, and yeah, I think it's key to, to include at least two sets of that stuff before every session. Get Marcos on. Marcos, what's up, man? How are you? What's up, bro? How are you? Good, man. Introduce yourself. Where, where are you from? Yeah, I'm from England, bro. I'm um, nice. And yeah, I'm, I'm actually going out to the States. Um, I got a soccer scholarship in August. Uh huh. Where where are you headed? What school? Um, University of Alabama in Huntsville. Wow, interesting. And uh, what part of England are you from? Um, it's called Chester. You probably haven't heard of it. It's not far. Yeah, I have. No, I've heard, heard of Chester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, so, what's your question? Um, I'm just going to ask you, like, sort of advice for someone who's if you try to build like a brand sort of similar to you, like an Instagram, trying to build, mm -hmm. um, what would be your advice to like help start producing content really? Would you say like, it's good to build up a load of content, try and just get as many videos as you can. So then you don't have to like do it every day. If you sort of get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, well, the number one thing that I see is you got to be educated. You got to know your craft. So whatever you're you're looking to do, whether it's in physical performance, whatever it is, whatever you want your brand to be um, around, you got to be a master in that. That you got to be a master of that craft. And I see a lot of people. It's sexy nowadays to build a brand, but the most important thing is you know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, you know, I've been studying this stuff for ten years. Um, and, you know, I'm not a top professional footballer, but I've been, you know, in many countries. So I have experience uh, and people deal with mentally when trying to chase a professional contract. So you got to put yourself out there. You got to get experience. That's the first thing. The second thing, like I said, you got to you got to know your craft. You got to study the stuff and you got to be obsessed and you got to truly love it. And, um, you know, that's the most important thing. You got to put out good stuff that helps people. And the third thing is you put out good stuff that helps people for free and you don't look for kicks back, kickbacks right away. It's not about like I got into this not to make a lot of money. I got into this to help people um, because, you know, where I come from, football isn't the, the biggest game. You know, it's more basketball, baseball, American football, and not a lot of people. There are a lot of people who have experience with strength and conditioning, which is good. But what I found is people need to have uh, experience within within football to know mentally what a footballer deals with, um, how to train around games, things like that, like periodization. So I think the most those those three are, are key. Yeah, sure. What do you what are you trying to build exactly? I'm like, I'm a qualified personal trainer and okay, looking to like. I'm going to study, uh, study sports science, so I'm sort of looking. I want to. I don't feel like I know enough to like yet to uh, sort of like sell anything. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like I do need to become more educated. Um, yes. On like the nutrition side, and like before I can even like start actually helping people out with it. But yeah, yeah that's what I want to do sort of mm -hmm. uh, as I become more educated. For sure. No, man, that's, uh, you know, what I would suggest for you exactly is build your, your brand in parallel with your education. So take, take your followers on the journey that you're on. Make sure you let them know that you're studying, you're trying to get better, you're trying to become more educated so you can help them. I think that's the biggest thing. You want to get better so you can help them get better and yeah. let them know, you know, you're not going to be right on every single thing. Um, no one is, but you're doing your best to use your education, your knowledge, your time to help others. Yeah. So sure. that would be my biggest advice. Yeah. All right. Cheers, bro. Yeah, man. Have a good one. I appreciate you. All right. Let's get some more people on. I enjoyed that. How do I get this question off here, man? God damn. I'm such a rookie. Just like I told uh, Marcus, you know, taking you guys on this journey with uh, with StreamYard here. I, don't, I have no idea how to get this question off. 
Seba FN, does strength training improve match endurance? Strength training does not is not going to directly improve your cardiovascular endurance and your cardiovascular fitness, your aerobic and your aer uh, anaerobic endurance. But what it's going to do is it's going to make you stronger. It's going to make your body stronger, more resilient, and you're, you'll be less likely to get injured. So what does that mean? That means you're going to be able to, you're going to have better biomechanics as long as you're doing proper exercises according to you and, and you as an individual. So bi better biomechanics is going to lead to better endurance because you're going to be more efficient when you're running. Second thing is, like I said, you're going to, you're going to get stronger. Your body is going to be stronger, less, re uh, more resilient, which is going to lead to you being, you being able to train more. So when you're able to train more and you're stronger and you're more resilient, you're automatically going to improve your endurance. Let's get Connor on here. Connor, what's up, buddy? How are you? How are you? I see you're a Liverpool fan. I love that. Yeah, Liverpool. Yeah. Where are you from, man? Uh huh. Okay, love it, man. What part? Uh, Dublin. It's one of the counties outside there. Uh huh. Okay, Dublin's a good spot, man. So yeah, what what's your question? Uh, I just had the question about um the number six, playing the number six. Okay. Ball. And um, I'm just wondering. So obviously, you need to have your awareness, look looking around your surroundings, you know. Um, I'm just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe like eight, nine times every ten, I'm aware I have to know where I am and I can move, make a dribble and pass the ball out. But how do I make it every time? Ten out of ten. Like what can I improve to make it? To make sure every time. Yeah. No. All right. So first of all, um, you know the fact that you have the mindset that you want it to be ten out of ten is awesome. As we both know, you can't be perfect. So the first thing you have there, you have down is you got to be aware. You got to always have your head on a swivel and you got to look for the spaces. What, what I really think is most important is once, you're, once your right or left center back has the ball, you want to have your hips open to the field. You want to be on a, on a, on a side on position. You don't want to have your back completely to the field. You want to be side on with your front foot because you want that ball to the front foot to try to go forward as quick as possible. Yep. So for example, if your right center back has the ball, you want to get in a space that's diagonal to him. So he can play that ball to your left foot and you can go forward right away. Yep. So um, I think the positioning there and, and, and spacing is key. Um, the third thing would be just play as many games as possible. Because uh, there, there are principles of the game, but there are game situations and there are decisions that have to be made during game time, which, is, which comes through game practice. Yeah. The fourth thing is being technically uh, good enough, technically efficient. So making sure you can turn with both feet, making sure you can play the ball with um, your inside of your foot, the lace part of your foot, the outside of your foot. You can curl the ball. Um, and like I said before, I think it's, it's, it's huge. Like, I think it's not talked about enough that you want to get into the game slowly. So whatever you're doing, you want to really warm up and maybe the first 15 to 20 minutes, try to connect your passes, connect passes, connect the team, direct the team. Um, and once you feel more comfortable, you could start playing more risky balls. But what I've been told by, by other experienced players is play the ball through the lines on the ground to the eight and the 10 and leave the, let the makers play the, play the, the final ball. Once you get more confident, you can start playing final balls, but that's not your main job. Yeah. That answer that for you. Any other questions? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. Appreciate your support. Where'd you, where'd you find me and my content? Just Instagram. Instagram on Solid, YouTube. Man. All right, man. So just, you know, if you, if you have any questions, just uh, reach out and I'll be glad to help you. Yeah.
Oh, and then one last thing, man. Uh, I would analyze. I would analyze players in your position. Um, so, for example, whoever you like in your position as a number six, whether it's Tony Cruz, uh, whether it's Busquets, analyze their movement. Um, yeah. And then I think it would be like try to find a player who plays like you uh, and analyze him. And and then the next thing would just analyze your games. Yeah. All right, brother. Appreciate you, man. Have a good one. Thank you. See you. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. How about you? Good, good. What's your name? Where are you from? My name is Jenna, and I'm from Atlanta, USA. Oh, awesome. Awesome. What part of Atlanta? Um, I live in Fulton County. Oh, okay, very nice. Very nice. I, I trained over there for a bit at uh, Toka. <laughs> Forgot the exact city it's in, but yeah, I love Atlanta. Yeah, it's a really nice city. Yeah, but yeah, what's your question? Um, so I'm I'm playing so I'm playing center back, and I also play center midfield, and so I want to know what's the best way. Like, how how can I be more? Like, how can I build up my agility, and how can I be more quick? on the field, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially with like a position that's, um, you know, like midfield, I want to know how I can be, you know, more quick. And I want to know how I can, you know, uh, get the ball more faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so what do you find that you're struggling with? Just like side to side agility and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And also, you know, um, trying to get the ball quicker is also something that I have a lot of struggle with. Defending or, or attacking? Attacking. As a number six, as a center back, or as a center back in terms of getting the ball quicker? In terms of, like, getting the ball quicker. Okay. So so the first thing in terms of getting the ball quicker from an offensive standpoint, I would – I think the biggest thing is communicating, like being a um, – showing that you want the ball. Show your teammates that you have the confidence to get the ball. Um, and then as a center back and a center defensive mid, like I told the other guy, you know, the most important thing is to keep possession for your team. Um, really, you know, try to circulate the ball, you know, to your outside backs, uh, to your number six, if you're playing center back, you know, short passes, connect your passes. And then once you have that confidence, you could start playing riskier balls forward. So I think, you know, players around you will feel more confident and you'll get the ball quicker. Like I said, if you ask for the ball more, be loud, be positive. Uh, and if you make a mistake, you, don't worry about it. Just focus on the next action. Don't put your head down. You know, try not to react. And then the second thing, thing in terms of uh, agility, do you do any type of um, any gym work? Do you do any speed and agility on the field? Uh, what type of stuff do you do right now? Um. So right now I'm just focusing on, I forgot the exercise, but basically I try to work on my footwork is what I'm doing right now. So I have a coach that I'm working with. And so right now, well, basically, basically the only thing that we're doing right now is speed and strength. So I haven't really asked him or looked into like agility. So mm. I, also, I also, you know, wanted to know um, if there's anything I can do um, regarding agility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so when you're talking about agility, do you have trouble like one V one defending? Is, yeah. is that what it is? Or is it okay? Is it, is it also reactionary? So like, for example, if the ball, um, if you're, if you have a forward in front of you and the ball drops, is it like getting there quick or is it more the one V one defending or both? It's more one V one defending. Okay. Honestly, I, I think the best thing to make it as football specific as possible um, is to, you know, pl literally play 1v1s. I think it's super underrated. Like, get one of your friends who is a good attacker, who's a fast attacker, and, and set up two small goals mm -hmm. and, and just play. Play. Uh, you can either, you know, set a timer for one minute and go at super high intensity, one minute on, one minute off. And you're literally just defending her. And um, one of the most important things as a defender is you want to force the
the player to their weak foot. And then as soon as they take a touch or they put their head down, you want to try to pounce on that ball, get your body in between the ball and her, get your arm up, really try to use your arms uh, and win that ball. So I, I would definitely, you know, work on that 1v1s. Second thing is, you know, I'm sure you're working on a lot of uh, stuff with, with your strength coach in terms of uh, deceleration, acceleration stuff. That's going to be very important. Um, and one of the biggest things is, is working on exercises that you could be on the balls of your feet. Because if you think about it, if you're flat footed, you're not going to be quick. But if you're on the balls of your foot, on your, your feet, and you train exercises, for example, um, lunges, squats, like on the balls of your feet with, you could even do body weight, you know, um, you're going to train your arches, the bottom of your feet, you're going to train your arches to be stronger, which is going to allow you to be quicker and more reactionary on the field. Okay. Does that okay. help you out? Yeah. Sounds good. So if you have any other questions, just reach out. All right. Thank you. Have a good Friday. See you. You too. Bye. Tiago, what's up, brother? Hey, hey, what's up? Sorry, this uh, this uh, question's over your face. I don't know how to take this off. But yeah, where, where are you from? What's your name? Uh, I'm Tiago. I'm from Portugal. Uh -huh, I could have and... guessed that. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, and my question is, I'm going to have a trial, basically a training camp where I'm going to train uh, there for a week. And I'm going to train as a winger. And my question is, should I try riskier things or should I stick to fundamentals and try, well, not to lose the ball and just try to do things right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a great question. So there's a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, how old are you? I'm 18. Okay. And this trial, is it going to, is it with a, uh, with a team that's at your level, below your level or uh, your it's, level? it's at Benfica. I don't know. You, you know, Benfica. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh -huh. it's, it's a great team. Uh, and I'm just really nervous because I think it's a great opportunity for me. I think of course. it's do, do or die basically. Cause I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say it like, yes, that. I wouldn't but say do it's, or die. it's really important that too much pressure on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's, re it's really important. And I, I just think, uh, I don't know if I should risk and go one-on-one -on -one and, you know, I might lose the ball and that, I don't know. Okay. I mean, what, so what type of player are you? Are you, are, are you, what are your strengths? Are you, uh, are you a good one V one player? Yes, uh, I'm fast. I'm good 1v1 player. I can play with both feet and mm -hmm. I also shoot, shoot well. Uh, I play as a winger and as a, a forward too. I, what, I uh, which wing, left or right? Left. I prefer left to go to the middle and shoot. So you're right footed? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, like I told uh, you know, the last two people that were on here, you know, even as a winger, you know, the first, I, I would try to gauge your defender, you know, and, and on a trial, I don't know what they're going to be doing. Do you know, is it going to be trial games or are you going to be in a regular training, like possession, things like that? Uh, we're going to be like 20 to 30 players. We're going to train as a group for a whole week and we're going to do a lot of different trainings, possessions and all that. It's not going to be just mm. a, a trial game, you know? Okay. Yeah, so honestly, I, I really wouldn't, um, you know, as hard as, as, as hard as it is, I would, I would try not to think about it too much, whether you should take players on 1v1 or not. Because, you know, as we both know, when you go into a match and you're thinking too much um, subconsciously, then your then your your brain your brain that's been ingrained with the reps that you've played during games the reps that you've trained it's not going to be automatic, and I think as a footballer, most of your actions should be automatic and and they should be ingrained. So that's the first thing I would try not to think too much. The second thing would be, you know, if you're playing left winger and your right back is slow, roast them, roast them, take them on. And you see he, you know, he try to see what foot he likes better and, and go to his weak side, you know. 
Um, I mean, I'm a defender, so as a as a defender, I don't like when people go to my left side because I can't pounce on them as much. You know what I mean? Because I'm a right footer. So I would, I would, yeah, you know, experiment with your defender, see how he plays, and then make your decision. And most importantly, take take guys one v one when you got the time and the space, man. Like if you get a switch ball and you're one v one with the guy, boom, take him on and 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 finish and produce. A, a game scoring opportunity because that's what's going to catch the eye of the scouts. But if you're three v one, don't take them on. You know what I mean. So I think it's it's decision making in the game. And then, bro, the fact that you said that one of your strengths is that you're a good one v one player, do it, show it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I, I think I, I'm overthinking. Uh, exactly. I'm just gonna go there and just play my game without any worries. You know, if I, if I play bad, I play bad. If I play good, I play good. I don't know. I'm just gonna yeah. enjoy my football and do what I what I know, basically. Of course, that's what it's all about, man. I think you know, the more you put, like you said, if you say it's do or die, the more pressure you put on yourself, you're gonna go in with nerves. Like you said, go in there, enjoy the football. It's not like it's a one day trial, you know. You're there for a week. Get used to the guys. Also, very important on a trial, man. Be friendly with all the guys. Be a good guy. Be friendly. But once you get on the field, be a killer, you know? And also to the coaches, be friendly. Introduce yourself. Shake their hand. Look them in the eyes. It's these little things that are important. Bring the cones out. Take the uh, the goals back. Show, the, show your character because, you know, Coaches, especially at that top level, they're obviously looking for how good and, and your talent on the pitch, but they want to see that you have a good attitude and you have a good character. Okay, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know how it goes, man. Good luck. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right, brother. Peace out, man. Bye. I want to get one more person on. I've actually really, really enjoyed this. Really enjoyed this. Uh, that's how you hide it. Okay. Can you do too much mobility, Spiros? Man, if you're doing mobility for an hour and a half a day, yeah, you can do too much. But most importantly, when you're doing mobility is you, you know, you feel good within the movement. There's no, no pinching. There's no burning sensation. You're moving actively through the movement. That's what mobility is. So I wouldn't worry about it. As long as you're on a proper strength training program, you, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. I, I would keep your mobility to, to 15 to 30 minutes per day. Make sure you do stuff before your session. Make sure you do stuff after your session. For me, you know, if you're sitting on a, on a bus too long or you're sitting in a chair too long at work or at school, make sure you're, you're doing mobility to open yourself up. But I wouldn't worry about it, really. Yo, music vibes. Which workout split? will be good for bodyweight exercises or exercises to do at home, like upper body, lower body. One day do upper body, one day do lower body. And you can do that, you know, since you're doing bodyweight, it's not a lot of load. You can do that four times per week. Look on my YouTube. I have plenty of full follow along workout. Can I train lower body three times per week if it fits in my schedule? I would not do that. Would not do that. I would do maximum twice per week. If you have time to do three times per week lower body, you should be doing something for your fitness instead. You should be playing matches, playing small sided three times per week. Lower body is not right. If you're on a properly planned program, you only need to do it once or twice per week. Can you stretch for 20 minutes a day or you become too flexible? No, you won't become too flexible. Don't worry about it. Really. It's, it's people think too much. They, you know, you stretch the things that you need to stretch. All right, guys, I think I'm going to head out. I appreciate you coming on. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Should I do it every Friday? I really enjoyed it. So I hope you guys did. I got to head over to the gym. Oh, Nick. Would you guys and girls rather me do it on Friday or Saturday? Just let me know quick in the comments. Benji, thank you, man. Thanks for your support. Zainel, thanks for your support. Jeremy, I appreciate you. LOL, boy. You the man. Spiros, appreciate you. Fridays. Okay. All right, homies. Appreciate you all. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Damie. Damie, you got to come on. You're speaking a lot in the chat. Where where you at in the, in the in the video, man? Love you. Love all you guys. Appreciate all your support.
Um, unfortunately, I can't get back to DM. So if you really have a a question you really need answered, um, hit, hit me on emails. Appreciate all you guys. Deuces. Have a good weekend. Have a good Friday if you're playing this weekend. Best of luck. Let's keep getting it, homies.